in kinetic molecular theory, what we're doing is we're explaining lots of big scale properties based on how these individual molecules are crashing into surfaces. And we're seeing that temperature is really going to be in a measurement of how much kinetic energy on average is present. And that that means if we break it down further, we can also start talking about molecular masses and velocities and things. But we're going to stay at kinetic energy for the moment. Now, if we're picturing an ensemble of molecules colliding with a certain kinetic energy, that's going to explain the concept of pressure. It's going to be the total force of our molecules hitting into the surface over and over again as they're bouncing off of the gas molecules, ricocheting and bouncing back onto the surface that they were colliding with. Now, out of the named laws that we reviewed uh, in previous videos, one of the things that we bring up is Boyle's Law. And Boyle's Law says that volume is proportional to 1 divided by pressure. In other words, we're saying that PV equals nRT. If I take volume over to the other, and I have pressure over to the other side, I can write it as 1 over P. So we're saying that this whole segment here is going to be a proportionality constant. Volume equals proportionality constant times 1 over P. That's what we're saying, really. Now, what's actually happening at the micro scale, though? What we're seeing is that all these gases we have inside are moving at their ensemble of velocities. Uh, because they have different kinetic energies um, based on the temperature. But they have the same average kinetic energy. So maybe this one is slow, maybe this one is moving fast, and we'll just say this one's moving at a medium speed, and we're going to have lots of these throughout, right? Whenever they're colliding with the surface, the average collision force, though, is going to be the net of all of these hitting into it. Now, if you have more force on the inside, that means that the you have so many molecules here that they're colliding and putting overall more force than the external pressure's force. It's going to move that piston upward until these molecules are hammering against the surface with the same average energy the exterior molecules are doing. That's the whole idea of Boyle's Law. It's all about that expansion and contraction until you have an equal amount of force on both sides of your surface. And that's because you have these molecules banging into it. Okay, so kinetic molecular theory really describes that well. The law of partial pressures is also well described by kinetic molecular theory. Because in partial pressures, we're saying, you know, if I have a bunch of oxygen and a bunch of nitrogen and a little bit of carbon dioxide in our air, and some argon around as well. I don't find pockets of argon and start choking. I don't find pockets of oxygen and have it rush to my head. It's uniformly mixed. All of these are going to be hitting a surface at a certain uh, proportion, right? The thing that has the largest proportion will be hitting a lot. Things with less proportion will be hitting less often. But all of them are going to be at the same temperature. They have the same average kinetic energy for each of these different gases. They're going to be hitting into that surface, and so what's going to dictate the proportion of each of these is how prevalent they are. Since nitrogen is, I don't know, something like 76% of the atmosphere, 76% of the collision force is going to be from nitrogen. You know, if oxygen is 15%, and I'm making that number up, I don't actually recall, it's going to be making up 15% of the overall forces. This is what we're talking about in the law of partial pressures. And it doesn't matter what the identity of these molecules are. Yeah, argon is heavier than uh, oxygen. Actually, I should make these into the molecules instead of just the atoms. Argon's pretty heavy. But in the end, it's not about how heavy the molecule is. What matters is how much kinetic energy it had. It could be slow moving and heavy, or light and fast. And its average kinetic energy will still be the same. So that's what we're talking about in the law of partial pressures. The amount of pressure, the force, is dictated by how much of that molecule there is and how often it's colliding. Okay, so that's what we're talking about with partial pressures. In Charles' law, we're saying that volume and temperature are proportional to each other. Again, I'll point out PV equals nRT. So since we're talking about volume and temperature, we could rearrange that to say volume equals temperature times some constant, and inside of that constant happens to be N times R divided by P. 
So this would be our proportionality constant hiding inside of this constant here. Now, as temperature increases, the average kinetic energy increases. Okay, that makes some sense. As a result, there's an increase of force from all the molecules on the inside hitting into the surface. And just like we saw with Boyle's law, if you have too much force on the inside versus the outside, there's going to be an imbalance. There's more beating happening on the inside, pushing it upward and outward, right up until they end up being balanced again. And you can see that happening right into here. So volume's going to increase right up until the pressure of the gas inside equals the pressure of the atmosphere. That's what's going to be happening as we increase our temperature. Now, there's a fourth thing that kinetic molecular theory will help us explain, and that's Avogadro's law. And that's saying that volume is proportional to the number of moles. So PV equals nRT, or relating number of moles to volume. I can just go ahead and move my pressure over here. This turns into my proportionality constant. So volume equals number of moles times some constant. Well, that's not something that should be shocking to us. As I pump more gas molecules into the space down here, there's going to be lots of things at a certain temperature. And that temperature, the average kinetic energy for each molecule is the same. However, what we have done is we've increased how often they're colliding with that surface. If you've got more molecules, you're hitting the surface more often. You're hitting the surface more often, more force pushing upward. This is going to expand right up until the moment where you finally have a balance of force on the outside and on the inside. That's what's going to happen with Avogadro's law. Volume increases until the pressure on the inside and outside are equivalent. So you can see that kinetic molecular theory helps us explain most of our named laws straight away and a few other things we've talked about through the ideal gas law chapter.